Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today we're going to finish up the USB stick and blender tutorial video. And if you need access to the project files, again, they're available for free at designcourse.com. And if you haven't yet, subscribe here on YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so now we're going to get into creating an actual realistic material. This right here just doesn't do it justice. Uh, so what we're gonna do is go into uh, the note editor. So left click and drag up here. And I'm gonna change this viewport to the node editor. If we zoom up, we can see this is just a representation of what we did over here. So it has the diffuse. And so we're gonna get, this is gonna be kind of a more complex type of node or material, but don't worry, just follow along and you'll see how it kind of works. So what we'll do is sever that connection. So hold control, left click, and just get rid of that and we want to add a mix to shader so we hit shift a shader and mix shader we'll put that right here and we'll connect this over there and then this top shader will go over here all right so now what we want to do for the second shader is going to be a glossy so we'll go to shift a shader and glossy and that will go right there all right, so we also want to add what's called a layer weight. So I have to remember where that is at. It's like one of these crazy ones down here or not. There we are. It's up there, of course. All right, I'm going to add that right here, and we're going to connect the facing to the FAC. And we're going to change this real quickly to 0.15. And real quick, I'm going to switch this to rendered, just so we can see what's kind of happening so far. All right, so if we sever that connection, we can see <clears throat> what it looked like before and then after. And we want to change the colors here uh, for the glossy. We're going to make this a light gray right around there. All right, and then I want to add what's called a color ramp and you know, connect it to the diffuse. So we'll hit Shift A, Converter, and Color Ramp. There it is. And we'll stick that just around here. Put this over here. We can see how things have kind of changed quite a bit. And what we want to do is kind of move this over here right around there and for this color kind of just push it up a little bit all right and then what I want to do is add a bump texture and attach that to our other nodes real quick so it's shift a vector bump and this is going to get added to the normal right there and then the normal down here. All right, and we'll go ahead and then we want to add what's called, I think, a Veroni texture. So Shift A, texture, and Veroni right there. And we're going to take the FAC and put it right there and then also put it on height so you can see like now nah, it's like this real interesting looking look but we need to take that scale and really push it up uh, quite a bit I'm gonna try 250 all right and then finally we want to add one more node shift a and we want to add a if I can find it here input texture coordinate take this over here and connect it just to object all right, so now we have something that uh, seems to emulate. Let me try 350 real quick. All right, cool. All 
All right. So now at this point, you know, we have the textures and everything pretty accurate. And uh, now we need to add the actual decal. So what we'll need to do is UV unwrap just this top portion. So what we'll do is go into edit mode. First, we'll change this to solid. Hit tab with that selected. We're going to come up here. We're going to switch to vertex mode. So we will just take one of these points that's along this inner path, the very most inner path, and then Alt and right click. Then what we want to do is hit 7 on our number pad so we can go to the top view. And we'll change this view down here to the UV image editor. We're going to hit new. And we're going to change the 1024 by twice. So 2048, 2048. Hit OK. And zoom out here with the uh, scroll wheel. And then I'm going to hit U and project from view to UV unwrap it. So we'll hit S to scale it up. All right, right around there is good. And then we're going to go ahead and save that. So go to UVs, export UV layout, which I've just done. And make sure that when you come down here, you change, you make sure all UVs are specified and the fill opacity is around 25%. So hit export UV layout. All right. And then what you need to do is open that in Photoshop. All right, so I've opened that up in Photoshop, uh, our PNG file. And what we want to do real quick, I'm going to get uh, Control-Shift-N for a new layer, hit Enter. Drag that down below the UV layer. And we'll choose like a, a, a darker color for the background, just so we can see this, that our UVs. And then what we want to do is open up the project file for a logo. You don't have to use mine. You can put anything you want in here. But I have included in the project files at designcourse.com for this specific tutorial. And I have open here. So Control A, Control C once you open that up. And then come at the top, Control V to paste that in. Then Control T, hold Shift, Alt, and left click and drag down. I know that was fast, but I'm trying to move quick here. So uh, left click and use the move tool. Then we'll want to make it white, so double click the right side of the layer and we'll make color overlay and then change the color to white. Okay and okay. And I'm just going to leave it like that. You could probably do a lot more. Anything else you want to do, you can do so. Yeah, maybe I will add some text real quick. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to add, so. Um, awesome design stuff, that's what I put. Take my move tool, shift, make it white. And maybe like right around there, whatever, you know. All right, so now we want to hide uh, these two layers. So basically it's going to be a transparent PNG. So go ahead and file. You can save for web if you wish. PNG 24, transparency, make sure that's accurate. And then save it. I'm going to go to recent places. Oh, no, not that one. There we go. I'm going to just call this uh, diffuse and save that. And then now what we want to do is go back to our node editor. All right, so we have to make a quick adjustment for this portion. I'm going to go over here and switch to rendered. And for the diffuse, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to sever that connection. I'm going to shift A, texture, image, texture. And connect that to the color portion. Obviously, there's no texture here, so it's blank. I'm going to hit open, choose diffuse. And there we go. Now, if you wanted to adjust uh, the scale of this, what you can do is switch back here to the node, no to the UV image editor. And if you scale, hit S, that'll get a little bit bigger, but you don't want to do it too much. I'm just going to hit, actually, that's kind of distorted right there. I can see. OK, so I had to play around with this to figure out what the issue was. 
You get weird issues like that when you uh, just take a part of a mesh and then try to UV unwrap it without doing anything else to the texture. So what I had to do is simply, we're, right now if I hit solid, we're, I'm gonna go back to edit mode. And what you need to do is just hit A and then A again to select all. Hit seven on your number pad and then hit U and then project from view. And then take this back up here, go to rendered hit S to scale, G, scale a little bit more, get this correct, and now everything is correct, there's no distortions in the text or anything. All right, cool, so now I, let me go ahead and switch, I'm gonna get rid of this, I right click and hit join area, down, all right, and then if you want to do a render of this, you can hit zero on your number pad and you can see whatever the camera's looking at. I'm going to hit N for properties up here, lock camera to view, hit N again to hide it. And that way we can just set up a basic uh, scene right here that can render. So we'll go over our renders tab or settings and we're going to change here. I'm going to change the X and Y to 1280 by 720. That's the video dimensions I do this. So for the preview, this is what you'll see. And we also want to take, take 50 to 100. That way it doesn't do half of those. All right. And let me come down here. Just last check. Renders at 100. I mean 1000. And that should be good to go. Real cool. If you do this, you can kind of like invert things. But uh, I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, yeah. So then what, all you have to do to get it going to render is just hit render. So I'm going to do that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to hit escape twice to stop that real quickly. I'm going to change performance for the X and Y of the tiles to 256. And you could do this if you have a GPU and you're using GPU compute. Now I hit render. And I'm going to pause the video because this may take a little bit of time. And there it is. All right, so that's basically the end of the course. You know, we could have probably done a little bit more with this USB. I think uh, uh, they they have more detail than this, but that's eh, not really worth mess messing around with. But anyhow, yeah, that is it. So uh, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, goodbye.